everybody. My name is Josh Lim. I am a uh, member of the Board of Trustees of Wikipedia Philippines. I have been a Wikipedia editor for the last 10 years now. And I am presenting Why Relationships Matter in Community Building Experiences from the Philippine Cultural Heritage Mapping Project. So first, a little humor. I'm kind of a pedant when it comes to making presentations, so I have a slide that is intentionally left back. <laughs> because I have 19 slides, I figured I need the 20th. This is the 20th slide. <laughs> but anyway, so what exactly is the Philippine Cultural Heritage Mapping Project? So it's a project that Wikimedia Philippines, thanks to the Wikimedia Foundation for funding, um, for funding the project, of course. Um, so it's a project that we implemented to document the Philippines' built cultural heritage. Um, all the old buildings, all the old churches, all the old um, structures that we have. Um, and also is a way for us to document these, um, these structures for posterity through the Wikimedia project. And before I forget, thank you Wikimedia Foundation for paying for me to come here today. <laughs> Yeah, I'm required to say that. But anyway, so the Cultural Heritage Mapping Project is the largest Wikimedia Philippines project in our five years of existence. Um, the project is worth around uh, $80,000 um, in that first year. And we're currently thinking of rolling out the second year of the project. So why exactly did we decide to do this project in the first place? Well, what happened was, in October of 2013, this happened. Um, this is Noon Church. It's in the central Philippine province of Bohol. It has a Wikipedia article. Um, what happened was the church was, um, so the entire province of Bohol was rocked by an earthquake. This church fell to the ground and is completely destroyed. Um, currently, they're working on restoring the church, although restoration work is delayed because what the Philippine government did was, let's split the budget across different departments. The department responsible for rebuilding this church has not yet released the money. That said, what happened was, with the Bohol earthquake in 2013, one month later, Typhoon Haiyan struck the Philippines, and what happened was that even more Structures were destroyed. Uh, one of the oldest churches in the country, which is Diwan Church in the province of Eastern Samar, was completely destroyed by the winds because the roof could not support the strong winds. Of course, it is the strongest typhoon ever recorded on land. The roof caved in and everything was swept away. Um, it destroyed a lot of the Philippines' built heritage and it was a turning point in cultural preservation. Because what happened was, with these two natural disasters taking place, we decided uh, that it was really important to document the Philippines' built heritage, something that we are notoriously poor in doing, at, uh, at doing before everything else is destroyed. There's a, um, and I'll bless you, and we'll get to more examples of that later on. So what happened was I contacted some, um, I contacted the person in charge of this project called Project Kisame, um, also known as the, ceiling, the Church Ceiling Art Project. Um, his name is Joel Aldor, and he led the, um, the cultural heritage mapping project in its first year. So he documented the churches that were destroyed. And he figured at first we want to get his support in um, putting all of the pictures that he took and put them up on Wikipedia. Um, that did not happen. What ended up happening was instead, we met with the Project Kisame people. This was a meeting held in Manila in January of 2014. And what happened was we ended up coming up with the Cultural Heritage Mapping Project. The CHMP, for short, began in earnest in May 2014 and was concluded on March 31st, 2015. It involved a good number of, um, a good number of people on our end. Um, some Wikipedians have noticed that there were new editors from the Philippines who had no idea what they were doing. And so we were able to get the History Wiki project involved in ensuring that the articles actually stayed, um, among other things. I'll get onto that later on. Um, the Philippine Cultural Heritage Mapping Project had about 20 to 30 participants from all around the Philippines, mostly from areas within Metro Manila, because that's where most of the applicants came from. Um, a lot of them had no Wikipedia experience whatsoever. However, they were cultural heritage practitioners. 
Um, a lot of them were amateur historians, amateur um, cultural mappers, and they really wanted to do something that enabled them to document the Philippines' built heritage and at the same time get paid to travel, which is one of the perks that they gave out during this project. So what happened was we had a workshop in Manila in May 2015 when the project was launched. We had three wiki expeditions afterward, and generally we left Wikipedians to edit based on what they want. Um, if they wanted to go to a particular place, we would pay for them to go to a particular place to document heritage in that area. And so what happened as a result of that? The CHMP was in fact successful. Over 5,200 images were uploaded. Some 710 articles were improved or created, although that fell short of our goal. Um, we felt that it was still a success nonetheless, given that information on the Philippines in um, on Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects tends to be underrepresented compared to all the other places that have content. Um, but at the same time, we felt that the success of the CHMP is not just about the content. We felt that the project is more than just bringing content on board. But rather, the CHMP, more importantly, was about how we could grow a community in a country where most people generally feel that being a Wikipedian means A, you're paid, which I promise you, I am not. I am absolutely not paid as a Wikipedia editor. The other Wikipedians in this room will attest to that. And number two, you need to have special skills to be one. And this project shows that it is not. Rather, we feel that the power of becoming a Wikipedian and the power of being immersed in this community is on people. This presentation, therefore, is about relationships and how relationships are important in building communities, in building strong, healthy Wikipedian communities in places where they generally do not exist. So then the question there is, more specifically, why do relationships matter? We felt in the Philippines, um, if you were at Open Source Bridge in 2013, I gave a talk on um, the sharing culture in the Philippines. Um, the video is floating around somewhere if you'd like to look at that. Um, and how we have an inherent culture of sharing information, of working together towards common goals. And so we felt that we wanted to play to the strengths of our culture to build Wikipedian culture in places where they generally did not exist before. So why do relationships matter in community building? I give three reasons. This is a, um, uh, first, relationships make your projects more relevant to the interests of your participants. Um, a lot of the people who joined had no idea what it was like to be a Wikipedian. But at the same time, a lot of us who are Wikipedians had no idea what it was like to be an amateur historian, an amateur cultural mapper, or a cultural heritage practitioner. A lot of us had no idea that the built heritage of the Philippines was in fact built on stories, or was built on the fact that a lot of um, this information is not available in a bookstore or in a, in a library, and is not generally available to the public unless you work with other people to get them on board. So for us, it was a story of mutual understanding. We wanted to help bring people to our projects, to empower them to share their information, but at the same time, we wanted to feel like they were a, um, a part of something bigger, that this is not only about history. Well, at the same time, we wanted to understand what it was like to be in their shoes. Because a lot of people who are involved in cultural heritage unfortunately tend to be quite frustrated by the experience because in the Philippines we tend to protect our cultural heritage quite badly. Um, we have a park in Manila called Rizal Park. It's the biggest park in the city. And that is where Jose Rizal, the national hero, was shot in 1896 when he was executed. What happened was a condominium developer decided to build a condominium within the line of sight of the, um, of the park. And now everyone calls it the National Photo Bomb. So everyone says about how we disrespect our cultural heritage. We wanted to understand what it was like to be in their shoes where they feel really strongly about society disrespecting heritage. And so it was part of that learning process that also enabled us to focus more on the, uh, on the content that we wanted to onboard, which in this case was historical content. 
Second reason as to why relationships are important. Relationships make new users feel more com uh, make new users more comfortable and less afraid of the digital world around them. Unfortunately, and I have very strong feelings about this, Wikipedia is a very scary place. Right? It's a very scary place for new users to be in. And new users are the most vulnerable people to go, um, are the most vulnerable pe uh, people in any project, more so in the Wikimedia projects. Why? It has been our experience in the Philippines and elsewhere that if you're new and you do something that is generally seen as out of the ordinary, what will happen is, more often than not, you will be bitten by a veteran editor. The guy will tell you, or the, or the person will tell you, what on earth are you doing? We don't like what you're doing, please stop. Or worse, if what you're writing is not notable, they will nominate it for deletion. Normally, that makes you feel bad. But, unfortunately, people do not always pick themselves up after their failures and continue editing. What they end up doing is they leave en masse. We've seen this happen in the Philippines. Um, we've used to have more editors back in Wikipedia's heyday, so around 2007, 2006. Um, and today I can count the number of really active editors with my two hands. That's how bad it is right now with our editing community to the extent that we're doing projects like this to bring more people on board. And so for us, it is really important that we protect new users so that they do not feel that they're being pushed around by people who do not understand them. So for us, we made ourselves very available to new Wikipedians, um, to our new Wikipedians. We tell, we tell them, you know, contact us on Facebook or send us an email or whatnot if you're ever um, in any trouble. Um, I'm an administrator on the English Wikipedia, which is where most of our editors um, and most of our CHMP participants actually edit in. So if they ever have problems, if article is facing deletion, if they needed to do something, if they needed to get something undeleted, if they needed to get something moved or whatnot, they would ask me or we'd point them in the right direction if they needed to be pointed in the right direction. At the same time, we gave a lot of support to them, so we motivated them to contribute more information. We, motiv we showed them um, the proper way of editing. We basically told them the Wikipedia way just so they know what it is like and just so they know that this is how you're supposed to do things so you're prepared in the event that someone else decides to take action against you. Um, and it made it less scary. We've seen that a good number of CHMP participants um, have stayed on throughout the year of the project, um, contributing information. They're even writing articles that are not related to the subject matter of the art. Um, of the project at hand, so they're also delving into other content areas, which by itself for the future, not only of the project itself, but also for the Wikipedians' um, general future, as, as we, so we can say. Um, the future of our participants as Wikipedia editors beyond the scope of the project. Finally, why do relationships matter? Relationships are critical in ensuring that your new members actually stay. Right now, it is still unknown whether five years down the road, 10 years down the road, um, CHMP participants or new generations of CHMP participants which we're hoping to get um, in the next few years or so um, will actually stay on and become Wikipedians in their own right, independent of their identity as cultural heritage practitioners. Because we feel that it is important for us to really build upon this um, group of people and to make them into the best Wikipedians that they can be. At the same time, we also feel that they have their own issues, they have their own, um, they have their own trials, and that is important for us to really understand where they're coming from. So it's also been a learning experience for us as older editors, because generally we don't really understand who are editors to begin with, to really feel what it is like to be in their shoes and to tailor projects so that they would stay in, they would stay much longer. And we really hope that they do stay. Um, that said, I personally feel that it is important for um, the community to eventually be more welcoming of new users. In 2000, um, last year, I actually gave a talk as well here at Open Source Bridge 
about um, boldness and collaborative collaboration, um, collaborative sharing um, in general, but tailored to a Wikipedian context. So what happens there is that we've seen editors lose motivation and instead they figure we should demand other people to do the work for us. Or they feel that, you know, why is it that you can't do the work? I'm just going to delete it. And that, for me at least, and for a lot of other people, I hope, is wrong. You shouldn't force your opinion on other people, let alone, you shouldn't delete people's work simply because they decided to move on to some other thing while they leave those articles in the dust. I've always felt that building Wikipedia involves a collaborative effort. Building any online community is a collaborative effort. And if you're going to build a collaborative effort, you better make sure that relationships are there. Um, and those relationships help foster the project in the long run. So many of the CHMP's participants are still active Wikipedians, and we're very happy that they joined us. Um, the Wikimedia Foundation decided to award a scholarship to Wikimedia this year in Mexico City to one of the CHMP participants. His name is Carlo Mosquito. Um, he is a professor at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. And what happened was, in the 12 months that he decided to join the CHMP and edit, he amassed over 1,000 edits. That's a lot in 12 months, because I did not amass my first 1,000 edits until 2006. Like well after, well a year after I joined. Um, at the same time, it also speaks of a motivation and how he really took initiative in building the content that we have. There are also other Wikipedians who are like him from the Philippines who are participants in the CHMP and who have also been motivated to contribute um, content to the project even after the project officially ended in May. What we're really hoping for now is that independently of being paid to travel around the country and to document build heritage, is that now, despite the motivator of money or the lack of motivation, um, financial motivation, that they actually stay and continue editing. Um, there are very, compared to the number of people who read Wikipedia, very few people actually will want to edit. Even fewer people will want to stay for as long as we have. Um, 10 plus years as a Wikipedia is now fairly common amongst people who, um, who are in the core editing community, but at the same time we need a lot of new blood. And so we're hoping that the people who participated in this project, the people who we've built relationships with, who we've supported over the last 12 months, will become the future of the community and the future of the movement. Now, this presentation is actually quite short because I imagine that this would also be a discussion on how we can continue building communities. Um, we are looking forward to implementing this project for a second year, and we could always use more input on how other communities um, build their communities, or how other communities deal with building relationships among their participants so that they um, continue doing the good work that they do. So, as we enter our second year, the question now is what's next and how can we do better? That's what I'm hoping this discussion will be about. And, well, thank you everybody for watching my very short presentation. But I certainly look forward to having an introductory discussion.